Hi, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham, and this is Business Line, your global business barometer, coming to you from the Dubai International Financial Center. Cannes on the French Riviera isn't just famous for its film festival. 26,000 real estate developers and urban planners gathered there for Mippen. It's an event which is billed as the world's largest real estate market. Naomi Lloyd has more. Cannes, playground of the rich and famous, one of the jewels of the Côte d'Azur, and once a year host to MIPIM, the International Investment and Real Estate Fair. This year, MIPIM celebrates its 30th anniversary. From small beginnings, it's become the world's largest real estate event. Industry leaders from more than 100 countries come here to Cannes to connect and to do business. And here by the beach, what a great place to do that. On display are 108 real estate projects from 30 countries, and the annual event has become a place for cities to woo investment and partners. It's a very good platform for France and for Europe to uh, showcase, because uh, the European presence is actually the leading one. Uh, we have we covered the whole Europe from uh, Moscow to uh, Portugal. They all showcase the best in terms of city development, in terms of real estate projects, uh, to the rest of the world. One of the global cities expanding their presence is Dubai, which has become a partner city of MIPIM. We came last year as a visit uh, to MIPIM show, and we were very happy to see a lot of uh, people from around the world visiting the show. So we decided this year to be part of the MIPIM show with our partners. You have the, the really key players within the industry that are present here. People know about Dubai. They know that it's a great place to visit. And I think it's time for people to realize that now is the time to invest in Dubai. Amongst the investment opportunities is Dubai South, a city centered around what will be the world's largest airport. Dubai South, uh, it's uh, the size of uh, Hong Kong. Downtown. It consists of eight main districts. There are freehold districts uh, where uh, a foreigner ownership can go up to 100%. So the reason we are developing uh, residential components is to uh, create these neighborhoods for the people who are going to work and move their families into uh, Dubai South. Within Dubai South is District 2020, home to the World Expo 2020 site. Expo 2020 is building a tremendous amount of infrastructure and everything is going to be completed October of this year. And in real estate life, that means that you actually have a project that's delivering. So Siemens is moving their logistics global headquarters from Munich to District 2020 post-event, as well as Accenture, who's going to open up a digital hub. It's not just the film festival in Cannes that gets the red carpet treatment. It's also being rolled out here for the more than 26,000 delegates who come here over four days. Many come back year after year to reconnect with people in the industry and continue doing business throughout the year. It's been a month of U-turns for US electric car manufacturer Tesla as they race to deliver their Model 3 vehicle at a suitable price to the mass market. But cutting corners to keep the costs down could throw a spanner in the works. James O'Hagan has the story. It's not just been a bumpy month for the stock prices of US electric car manufacturer Tesla. Just days after announcing it would close most of its stores to cut costs, the company made a U-turn. It would instead hold on to most of them and up the price on a majority of its vehicles by about 3%. And this too, just a few weeks after cutting prices. These false starts are all part of the race to make an electric vehicle for the mass market. Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced a long-awaited version of the Model 3 sedan would be available starting from €31,000, but many analysts wonder if that price point can really be profitable. The company is, is supposed to hit their momentum. I think later in the year when they have more sales for this cheaper Model 3, if there continues to be loss, I think there'll be a lot of questions. I mean, they're going to need to get to the point where this car is going to fund their future products. If this car doesn't do well and they're not in the black, 
um, you know, that kind of really brings into a lot of questions about Tesla's future viability. All these reversals haven't instilled investors with much confidence, even a day after finally unveiling their electric people carrier, the Model Y. Sometime in 2021, we'll have the, the sort of standard version. Stocks still closed 5% down, but it's not all doom and gloom for Tesla, especially if the company can corner the market for electric sports utility vehicles, or SUVs. Right now, uh, crossovers and SUVs make up over 50% of the sales. They're basically selling at uh, twice the rate of standard sedans right now. But I think what's gonna happen is the Model Y will eventually be one of its best-selling models. And with a new 865,000 square meter factory due for completion this year in Shanghai, Tesla may be able to tap into the rapidly expanding electric vehicle market in China as a local manufacturer. Forbes has published its 33rd annual World Billionaires list, and believe it or not, in 2018, some of the super rich have been feeling the pinch. Jane Witherspoon has the story. Billionaires as a whole lost a bit of their reach and wealth in 2018, but the cream of the crop are still on top. That's according to Forbes' 33rd annual World Billionaires list. There are 2,153 billionaires on the list, down from 2,208 last year. Their total combined net worth is a cool 7.7 trillion euros, compared to 8 trillion last year. Forbes assistant magazine editor Louisa Kroll puts it in perspective. You see a vehemence against these people um, because of the wealth and equality that we see in the world. The reason that these billionaires aren't doing well is because nobody is immune from market forces. With a net worth pegged to 115 billion euros, Jeff Bezos has topped the list again, but his impending divorce proceedings could put an end to that reign. His wife, Mackenzie, uh, soon to be ex-wife, she was an early accountant at Amazon, and given the laws in Washington state, she could end up with half of his stake in Amazon, which if that happens, he would not be number one and she would be the world's richest woman. Forbes says China is bumpy ground for billionaires. There were 102 Chinese drop-offs this year. There were also the highest number of newcomers. There were 44 newcomers. So what you see are some people getting super rich. The richest newcomer on the list is Chinese. Uh, but then you also see fortunes falling fast. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett held on to second and third place respectively. Gates saw his net worth increase to 85 billion euros, while Buffett shared 1.3 3 billion off his. Well, that's all we have time for in this edition of Business Line. Be sure to tune in again next month for a roundup of the biggest investment stories from around the world. I'll catch you then.